Now, the number of Democrats siding with the so-called rich now growing to 32 when it comes to extending all the Bush tax cuts. Back to weigh in is our panel. We have Lee Hawkins of the Wall Street Journal, Fox News contributors Monica Crowley and Leslie Marshall. Well, Leslie, first to you. We keep hearing the rhetoric from the White House. These are millionaires and billionaires. The president just said that yesterday. He said this is, you know, money going to billionaires. This is not a time when they can afford, when we can afford to give them tax cuts. 80% of the people who would see their taxes go up are in the 200 to 500K category. These aren't millionaires and billionaires. Well, that specific dollar amount, no. But David, I'm still trying to get over the laughter being married to a doctor. If my husband could even touch $500,000 a year, <laughs> we'd be, I don't know what year you're living in. Doctors don't make that now. Go see an HMO. They're starting at 75, yeah, 80K that's, that's a year. True. Doctors they're, aren't they're rich hurting. anymore, please. But, but again, Monica, the fact is, is the rhetoric coming out of the White House is very different from the facts that we've uncovered. The fact is 80% of those are not millionaires and billionaires. And many, many of these people are small business owners who don't live the rich life. They, they put all their money back into their small businesses. Right. That's where their money yeah. goes. No, this is class warfare straight up. This is less about economic policy than political posturing and political rhetoric. Look, when you mention small businesses, absolutely. These are the, the people that drive about 80% of all new job hires in this country, small businesses. You're going to penalize them by taking money out of their hands in order to hire one, two, ten new people by giving it to the government. But even setting that aside, Side, David, when you look at the onslaught of attacks on the so-called rich, let's say we are talking about Bill Gates or Warren Buffett. These people employ a heck of a lot of people, right? When you hit the rich like this, these are the folks who are more willing to take risks. Well, I don't mind those guys getting. To, I don't mind. I David, really no, don't no, mind I, those guys take issue paying with more that. personally. Da what, what David, I mind, but, hold on a second. What I what I mind is is the fact that the the rhetoric that is being used is painting. All these people, 80% of the people who fall into that category are below a million dollars. Right. And these are folks who can't afford to hire anybody if they have to pay and more taxes in this themselves. kind of environment. It's the vast majority of the entrepreneurs, the small businesses, the people that drive the innovation in this country that's and do it. the vast majority that's it. And of that's the hiring. The rich too. And it's the president that had uh, that sentiment where he said, I do think that a certain at a certain point you've made enough money. And I think right there, what does that really Tells say? You. And this Monica, I'll give you one thing about the, the super rich. And, and Leslie, you can chime in on this. Uh, the fact is, is that once you reach that level, even Warren Buffett has said that. Warren Buffett doesn't pay at even the current rates at 35 percent or whatever the top rate is. He pays, what is it, 16, 70 percent because he makes all of his income on stocks and, right. and that sort of thing. Right. He says, I should pay more, and I think he should pay more. What about, Leslie, the idea of getting rid of all those advantages that the super rich have that allows them to avoid paying the taxes that even the 200,000 category pay, getting rid of all of those deductions and just bringing down the rate or keeping the rate as it is. Well, that's not totally a bad idea. Too much is given, much is expected. I like the haves taking care of the have-nots, but then people are going to call me a socialist. The problem that I have with this overall, David, is when you're talking to people out there out of work who've lost their homes, average Americans making 40, 45, 47,000 with two incomes, uh, 250,000 plus is, is very rich. And the jobs weren't there. That's why we're where we are today. The economic, the economic money, the stimulus uh, from, from that money is not there. These people were not spending and they were not hiring so why should we give well, them the, more the, time the, but the not to is, hire and not to stimulate this is what gets me jobs 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 the president said it again yesterday he says it every day that his number one priority is jobs as well he should say but if he does anything to upset the apple cart anything at all right. to discourage people who are in a position to hire to hire because they're worried about the taxes go up that's why it. do it that's it and this is what makes does he no really sense. care about jobs this you is think? what makes no sense about this assault on small businesses and frankly the rich nobody has ever gotten a paycheck or a job from a poor man it's the rich man okay and this was my point earlier, David, about the assault on not just small businesses, but you. the wealthy, because I they're the most able to take the risks that will create but, jobs. But the, fa the fact is, I'm wondering what the top priority of the administration is. Is it genuinely to create more jobs, or in fact, is it just to redistribute wealth? I mean, that seems well, to and, be and, and number that's, one. That's the concern. This whole mentality of redistribution of wealth is something that's going to backfire, because even the Democrats now, with 31 of them saying that they want to extend the Bush tax cuts, it's going to backfire on us. All right, last word from Lee with the active cell phones. Be sure to tune in, by the way, to Fox Business <laughs> all next week for your special series.
it is time for buy, sell, home. We take the names and stories in the news. We treat them as if they're stocks. Would you buy them, sell them, or hold them? Well, it's getting tougher to find a place to smoke in New York City. Mayor Bloomberg announcing plans to ban smoking in parks, beaches, and other outdoor spaces, including the pedestrian mall in Times Square. So expanding the smoking ban. Are you a buy, sell, or hold them? Yeah, a cigar smoker, I don't think so. Yeah. At times, right? You there know, you go. I didn't know your cigars were. We all know the evils of smoking, yeah. and nobody's condoning smoking, but this is the nanny state gone really manically crazy. This is outdoors, wind is blowing all over the place. There's, this is completely it's, unnecessary. It seems silly and unnecessary to me. Leslie, what do you think? Buy, sell, or hold? As a former smoker, I say buy. Okay. Secondhand smoke is very deadly, and there's enough pollution. But not outside, it's not deadly. I mean, at a beach, it's. But you know, it's funny because Mayor Bloomberg, Leslie, is also a former smoker, and uh, you know, it's they're always the the strongest uh, advocates of the other side when you <laughs> switch. I'm a sell on this, and scoreboard's putting a hold on it. When Donald Trump yells, "You're fired!" It's going to be something the new cast of Apprentice has heard before, because instead of up and comers or celebrities, a new version of Apprentice which kicks off tonight, features men and women who have lost their jobs during the economic downturn. Lawyers, real estate agents, financial advisors, these are just among some of the professions. So the unemployed apprentice, do you like I this think idea? So, yeah, give people a chance. Give the people who really need it a chance. It's a buy. Any opportunity for an unemployed person to get a job, this is a definite buy. Good Another for buy. Leslie, what do you think? I say buy, but I think he should hire all of them. He certainly has the money to do so. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, he does. But I'm a buy in the concept, and scoreboard is a buy as well. California gubernatorial candidate and former eBay executive Meg, Meg Whitman has now spent $119 million bucks of her own money to fund her campaign. As a new record, Whitman's going to face Jerry Brown on November 2nd. So Meg Whitman's donations. Leslie, because you're out in California, I'm going to go to you first. What do you think? Sell her, sell the money, sell it all. No, I'm tired of all the rich people running uh, the states okay. and, and the country that I live in. Fair enough. One sale. I'm buying this. Capitalism, yay! No, and I'm buying her. I like her One buy. Much. Well, we'll see if it works, so I'm going to hold you on. You know, I'm a hold on this one, too. We'll see what happens. Scoreboard says... It's a ka-ching. It's a buy. A National Infrastructure Bank. Is that a buy, sell, or hold? First to the panel, then to those at home. Leslie, what do you think? Buy, sell, or hold? Um, I didn't hear the question. The infrastructure <laughs> so bank, buy, sell, or hold. Oh, um, actually, uh, I'm going to buy it, take money from okay. BP, and create jobs. One buy. Wasn't the trillion dollar stimulus supposed to be for infrastructure? Yes. Just, right. just smack some banana republic. We'll sell. see if it helps us get more deals done. I don't know. Based on Fannie Freddie and all these other ideas, I think it's.